let's get into what we're going to cover in this workshop. So there's loads of, of different ways to market your business, any business. And it doesn't always require large budgets, fortunately. Now you'll, be, you'll be glad to hear it. But what we, we want to emphasize is don't be afraid to spend if it does provide a return on investment. It's the old saying, you know, you've got to speculate to accumulate. But it does work. Um, we would also ask you to bear in mind that if you are doing things yourself or you're looking to outsource it with an agency, don't expect not something for nothing. It, you know, it is nice if, if you can get it and it does happen occasionally. But what we're going to do is give you lots of examples for inspiration. We're going to look at some ideas that you can take, maybe for your, or hopefully for your business. Um, and also um, the, the methodology for being creative, how you go about the process. Um, so even if you do it yourself or you don't do it yourself, it's just good to understand the process of how things work. And if you, if you can understand the, the fundamentals, I suppose, you'll get more out of the creative that you work with. And you'll be able to, to manage their expe expectations, your expectations. But essentially, this will give you the tools to turn you know, simple ideas into reality. So let's get stuck in. Um, like I said, take plenty of notes, get the questions going. And um, Ben's going to kick us off. Thanks, Andy. So when it comes to creativity, um, a lot of people think, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a different world from what I'm used to. I'm more analytical or whatever. Um, but what we'd encourage you to say is, is I can do this. Don't say I can't. Uh, anyone who ever took a shower has had a great idea. But it's the people who get out of the shower and take it to market that are the ones that change the world or whatever. And it's actually a really enjoyable process. Uh, Wayne Hemingway said that creativity can solve any problem. If you're a good designer, you can do print ads, you can design glasses, you can design a house. So there's, it's all, it's all about applying yourself. And there is a process that you can use that will help you to release that creativity that's inside of you. It's really good for mindfulness as well, actually, because when you're focusing on a, on solving a, a problem creatively, it tends to consume you. It's a, it's a good way of switching off from the daily stresses. So give it a go. And if you do struggle, you can always get somebody else to help you with it as well. So we're going to start with the most important thing. And, and for those of you that have been on previous webinars, um, you will see that we repeat a few things and to drill it in more than anything else, but also because there's such a lot of crossover here that um, it's really important to get those foundational things right to set you up to succeed. So it doesn't matter if you're writing, uh, a, it doesn't matter if, you, if you're doing a creative project for yourself or if someone else is gonna do it for you or if you're gonna do it for someone else. Whatever you do, you start with a brief. It's that old adage that we said from day one, if you fail to plan, then you should plan to fail. So write down what it is you're trying to do. Be really specific with this and think about the end result, but be realistic with it as well. It might be that you want to increase sales. You know, what's your current turnover? What, where do you want it to be? Is it viable? And something that we always say to marketing departments is, have you seen the business plan? And nine times out of 10, the answer is no, which is unfortunate because the whole point of marketing is to help support the business to achieve its objectives which are in the business plan so it's really important to think how is marketing working to support our goals as a business and then think about your audience what are the demographics of them how old are they what's the wealth what sort of area do they live in who is it that you're trying to target and what are the psychographics what do they value what how do they feel about things what are their challenges and what problem do you solve and where do they get their information? Because that's going to tell you the format that you're creative and you're thinking differently needs to be in. And then think about what the challenges are for the projects. They could be things like resource, not having a videographer, for example, or it could be time. You're busy doing your other work or it could be budget. And we know that this always comes up. Um, from time to time when we speak with different clients is budgets an absolute nightmare we, we've not got a budget or we've got a very small budget or we we have a budget but we just don't know what it is one thing we'd always say is that if you are going to outsource do make sure that you know you're realistic and upfront about your budget it's not a game of poker 
if you give your budget to an agency, they will spend it all. That's their job. So it's okay to get price ideas, but don't always judge it on the cheapest one. Price doesn't always reflect value. What you want to do is make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck as you possibly can. And that means that the supplier that you work with, whether it's a freelancer or a company, an agency, um, you want to know from them, how are you going to get the most out of this budget? And some of these things, when you write the brief, enable you to get a feel for what, what kind of return you're expecting. So, for example, if you want to increase turnover and you know av on your average value of a sale, then you can sort of say, well, I need it to increase it by this amount of sales in this period of time. And that's a value of X. So my return on the investment needs to be Y. And that's in one of our earlier webinars that you can download from our website. There's a, an actual formula for working out your return on investment as well. So a good brief will help you benchmark. And don't forget, it's that, thinking about that return. It might be that you don't need an increase in sales, particularly that your objective is actually to do brand awareness, which you know might be a bit more difficult to translate into real terms of what the bottom line is. But you can measure things like brand awareness and um, with share of voice and reputation and that kind of stuff. Or perhaps maybe you want to generate leads. And remember that generating leads doesn't necessarily mean that the marketing is going to do the conversion for you as well. So think about how you're going to track all of this. And that's going to give you a really good starting point when it comes to your creative, because you're going to know what kind of parameters you're working to. And it'll also keep you on track. So the first thing that we're going to take you through is a series of different examples, really, to give you some inspiration, to give you some ideas. Um, you can steal these if you want. You could do them exactly the same. We don't necessarily recommend that because it's what's appropriate. But um, we're going to show you lots of, of examples of thinking different. Some of them have got bigger budgets. Some of them have got small budgets. Some of them have got no budget. They just simply cost a bit of time. So we'll start with direct mail because inspiration comes in all forms. And this is actually nowadays a road less traveled. Email means that, you know, it's a lot more, it's a lot quicker. It's a lot more cost effective. It's often free. And so what often happens is people go to email because it's simpler and more cost effective, which means there's a lot more of it. And then if you're anything like me, then you probably get a ton of emails in your inbox, half of which you don't even read because you don't know who they're from. So it's not always the best approach. Email marketing can be really effective, but it is a road very well traveled. Direct mail, not so much. And we're not talking about mass market direct mail necessarily. That again has its place. What we're going to talk to you about is targeted direct mail, picking your targets and sending them something specific because who doesn't love opening something interesting in, in the post? Um, if we get a handwritten letter off people, it's much more engaging than one of these mass mail out type things. Here's a project that we did for a company called BidTech. And what they do is silent auction software. So it was when iPads first came out and there was already a lot of buzz because of the iPhone. But when the iPad came out, everybody was very excited to see what this could do and that sort of bigger format and so on. So these guys uh, developed a system where basically you have an iPad on every table at a fundraising event and it'll be designed to match the event, you know, the graphics on the screen. It'll have things like the order of ceremony, um, the menu, all the auction items. You can order drinks through it or even a taxi or even a hotel room. Um, so they put all of that functionality in. But the main part of this was that rather than putting a bid into an envelope, and then hoping that you were the highest bid, this had a leaderboard, you'd enter your details, you could choose to be anonymous or you could choose to put your name on there. And when you bid on something, you appeared on this big screen. And the idea of this is that rather than having a limit to the bids because of a sealed envelope, this would encourage people to outbid each other, especially if one of their mates is on the other table and they really want those signed Muhammad Ali boxing gloves you know, they would see their mate bid on it and think I'm going to outbid them. And it becomes a little bit of a, an ego contest sometimes as well. So a fantastic opportunity for charities to earn more money. But 
the difficulty was how do you get all of that across and get it actually in the hands of the target so what we did was we came up with this idea well you've already got the ipads you've already got the software how comfortable would you be if we sent them to all of your targets for 48 hours so we had five of these um and we sent them out by courier they would turn up and it would be signed for by the person receiving it was very clear instructions this is yours for 48 hours and then we're going to come and collect it have a play we hope you enjoy it and it's come in this nice box you know very personalized to them on the screen it had their name and while they were playing with it the software told their team the bid tech team that the people were online so they could give them a call while they're actually using it and this is a really great time to call someone especially because ipads were so new gave them a chance to play with it perhaps before a lot of their friends would and actually experience the software itself now as a result this was a 75 percent immediate sign up so it was sent to 100 people and 75 of those companies and we're talking bernardo's nspcc etc actually signed up and we've lowballed the cost of each project so uh, the cost of the project sorry was five thousand pounds the average sort of um value of these started at five thousand pounds some of them went up to ten so we know the return was three hundred and seventy five thousand pound plus which is a fantastic uh, return on investment and a great you know success rate it might sound well hang on that's i've not got five grand to to blow on this but it's just a different way of demonstrating that if you target your your direct mail at specific people and put a little bit of thought into it you can actually achieve really good results and you could possibly do it in a different way maybe not with ipads and bespoke packaging andy thank you right this might be for the uh, the older demographic um on the on the webinar today does anyone remember these the view master um you basically you put them up to your eyes you put a, a disc in and you can go around and see the pictures or specific messages well when ben and i worked for the previous agency we wanted something different to highlight our portfolio of work but in a creative way because it's it's a very you know in, in the agency world you, you're trying to get new business it, it's very competitive a lot of uh, marketing managers are receiving you know, 10 calls a week on everyone trying to sell them their things. And often they'll just say, oh, send me an email. And you, you might send a, a cred doc um, on an email, which isn't really that powerful and just kind of gets deleted. So we thought, well, we want to do something different here. How can we, you know, put a smile on someone's face? How can we get it in the hands of the decision maker, which is often a, an issue of getting through to them? So... What we did is we, we come up with, well, I say we, it was actually Ben who came up with this idea. I can't take credit for that one. But um, we, we first of all, we saw specific targets. So who do who do we want to work with and and how are we going to get it into their hands? So we, once we come up with this target of about 100, we then organized the, the slides with a portfolio of our work on the first reel and we sent it to them all nicely boxed up. Uh, with a nice little message in there and then waited a couple of days a couple of days later we then sent a second reel with further um credentials of our business and our services and what we do and how we can help and then a day later i then called them and after they asked who's calling please i wouldn't say where i was calling from i'd just say it's the view master man and even the reception receptionist would know because this Viewmaster had been passed around the whole company. And it's obviously something that put a smile on their face. They were, it, we were always remembered. And it was that feel good factor. So from going from trying to speak to someone and not being able to be put through to the decision maker, when I called up with this one, it was yet yeah, straight through. And what you're then doing is you're starting the relationship off off on a really positive way because like i said they've got this smile on the face they like it because it's different it's it's very creative and of, of course they're sharing it everywhere to their social channels so it was something that worked really well and it's fairly cheap to do so we got about 100 of these made up 
um, cost about twelve pound per unit, so not that not that expensive at all. But what we found was there was a twenty five percent sign up rate, and that converted into new business about two hundred and fifty thousand. So it was something that was really did really well for Ben and I and the agency that we worked with. So that's just a, a, a nice little simple one. This is a really good one as well, and this is the the love created Christmas tree. So this is an agency in Manchester that are very successful already, but. This was an example of how to do something common, but doing it differently. So you'll, you'll know that every year when it comes to Christmas time, it's the same old rigmarole, sending out um, Christmas cards or doing a no cards, give to charity type of thing. But the majority of businesses just send out a, an e-Christmas card. And it kind of becomes a non-event because you're receiving you know, many of these, tens, hundreds of these, and they just go, oh yeah, that was nice delete onto the next one and what these guys wanted to do is in december you know a lot of people a lot of businesses are on wind down that's what they always say we'll, we'll pick up the new business back in january these guys wanted to to keep prospecting all the way up to um, until christmas and you know with with everyone's e-cards or christmas cards they're not expecting to get business hours of it. well these guys are they were like we need to do something we need to think differently and, and get something in their face. So again, they picked a number of targets, but they um, created um, the, the the magic tree, but a big six footer, you know, the ones that you, you get in your car, but actual six footer. And it was all scented up and everything. So it was the real deal. And they hand delivered it uh, to their specific targets um, and who they'd been wooing for a while. And um, Again, this thing really put, it's going back to what I was just saying about the, the Viewmaster, it was the smile on the face, it was a feel-good factor, and it was something that everyone in the office would talk about, having the pictures taken and then sharing it, and it was just a, a really clever idea. Now, we don't know the the, the, the cost of, of what this was or the return on investment. What we do know is a really good idea, and we, we know a couple of the guys over there, so after speaking to them, they did say that they'd won some of their target clients. Um, as a result of doing this, um, but also as well on an industry side of things, they actually won a number of industry awards for the creativity. Um, so that's just a, a, another idea for you. And lastly on this, there's a really simple idea, um, which is a, a photo book. So it, it's, you know, if you need a nice way to showcase your work, you can look at coffee table books, leaving a, a you know, in reception, but rather than the, the usual portfolio of sending out a cred stock as i said earlier that kind of gets dismissed or deleted we wanted to be able to send out something to specific targets with a personalized approach so maybe if you've got lots of nice products or lots of case studies of how, how you've helped um, other businesses something that you know that's the wow factor for your business this could work really well and you can have it in reception or whatever now normal photo books are you know, they, they can be quite expensive to print, especially if, you, if you're doing individual books. Um, if you obviously want to bring the cost down, then you're going to have to increase the volume um, at the printers to make it cost efficient. But if you're doing it on mass, then you're not going to get any uh, no personalization. So, yeah, we, we basically found a, a cheaper solution, which is the photo book. And you can, you know, all the, the apps online, you can do this really um cost effectively you can print them one at a time from 40 to 60 pounds or something like that and again you can customize them to each client so you could just you know if you're picking 10 contacts or, or five contacts you can just have a nice message on them of the first page with their name just making them feel a little bit special and once you do that it just gives you the foundation to start a relationship you're getting their attention so rather than going in cold and trying to build it up You'll, you'll start halfway up the ladder if you do it like that. So it's just a different way um, of, of thinking about the creativity. It's a nicer way of displaying your work and it really makes it stand out as well. Yeah. So what if you need to work with outdoor advertising? It can be outdoor advertising, you think of bus sides and billboards and that sounds really expensive, but it doesn't have to be. It's not necessarily about billboards. Um, one of the people that we work with is, was an estate agents and they've already got tons of outdoor advertising in the form of their sale boards. And you tend to see them all up in different areas. And, you know, you see some estate agents have more than others. 
and you, or you might judge them on the kind of properties that they've got or how long the boards are up for is something that that often makes a difference so one of the things we did um for this estate agents roberts and co was um just a really simple change they wanted to do some marketing the information that's on the boards has to be fairly simple um so rather than just doing what everybody else does we, we they did a lot of rentals this particular business so um you have to let and let buy and we just changed it to too late and what happened was it's a bit like when you go to a gallery and one picture's just slightly at the wrong angle everything else is nice and straight the one at the angle really stands out and what we found was that this really stood out to people because they something didn't seem right and then they saw the joke um it also created a sense of urgency you know that properties move quicker so maybe i need to get in touch with them or maybe i need to make a decision quicker as well and it became really well known around the neighborhood people would comment when they call and that kind of stuff and mention the clever sign and it's just a bit memorable using what they already had so this is about thinking differently just taking something that exists and twisting it a little bit just to make it stand out Right, let's have a look at a few more examples here. Has anyone travelled on the M6, M56 and seen Vote Pies graffiti across the bridge? Um, I'm sure you all have. Millions have. Does anybody, I'll just put it in the chat now, does anybody know what it is? What Vote Pies is? A few people have seen it, but Sandra doesn't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, these are actually a, a band from Liverpool. And um, it's a really good example of getting your brand name out there, this is. I know it's illegal and we're not condoning um, graffiti and bridges or something, but the, it, it's a good example of getting the, the, the name and the, the brand out there. And I'm, I'm, I am actually slightly disappointed with the, with the band because they could have done so much more with this publicity from something illegal but very simple. Because these are a band and they've been going for over 30 years in fact that that graffiti you can see has been on the bridge for just over 30 years and how it got there is there was an accident once and they were on on the road going across the bridge and um they were they were stuck and they were bored so they just decided to write their band name on there which is again it was wrong but that, that's how it happened but they didn't they didn't actually release their first album um until 2016 so they've wasted you know a good 30 years of the name being out there but they, they actually managed to become a, phenom a phenomenon despite no one actually knowing what they do but what it did do is they they got so much coverage it went everywhere from local papers to national to tv and um yeah it was just a it, you, you couldn't really put a cost on return on investment for outdoor advertising because the amount of eyeballs the millions of people that see that that graffiti every day but we just wanted to highlight so as i said we're not condoning the uh, condoning graffiti in any way uh, but there is a type of uh, graffiti that could work um, really well for you it's called clean graffiti and um what is it it's basically cleaning a specific area of a road which creates an area of advertising through the contrast of dirty and clean areas. So essentially, you put a stencil of your brand or a message on a pavement and, um, and jet wash it and it comes out like the things you can see now. And in, in marketing terms, this was a, a fairly new concept. So it's been, only been around since about 2006. And um, I think it was in France it started. But the first company to do it in the UK, uh, they did a nationwide campaign with Gumtree to really you know, bring out their, uh, raise the profile of their brand. And it can work really well. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, a, a, a huge business or a one-man band or SME, whatever it is, it, it can work really well. The benefits of this are, it's a highly targeted geographical placement. And, and the good thing about it is there's actually a lack of competing media in the same space. So you can place this anywhere. Um, why companies, normally do this if they're launching a new product or service or they want to increase brand awareness that's a big one or you want to increase or initiate a sales campaign or just highlight a future event so is it legal well it's a guerrilla marketing service 
um, but without the permission from the local authorities. But thousands of these adverts have been placed across the UK since 2000, 2006, and there's been very, very few complaints. Nothing's ever happened. And even local councils and police authorities have got it on the act. So don't worry about getting told off if you're choosing to go down this route. Um, so, as I said, who does it well? Every retailer has got involved in this. Fashion houses, loads of charities do it. Those of charities have done it really well. Car dealers, and like I said, the, the really small businesses as well. Bit of advice, they tend to work best in dwell locations. So if you are thinking of doing this thing like bus stops, um, train stations, fast food outlets, that type of thing. And the real key to this is you've got to have a clear and concise message. So the, the real strong call to action is going to be key here. Um, what we'd say is, well, just to give you a couple of examples of, of who's done it well, Domino's did it for a new store opening um, a few years ago. And instead of the uh, the ad saying new store opening, they just said free giveaway if you mention the advert. So what they did is they, they placed 25 ads uh, within two miles of their store. And actually, in the first two days, they gave away over 457 free garlic breads. And obviously, people are going in for the freebie, but they're also upselling them on the on the normal um, orders as well so it had a massive effect i mean if you if you are doing this if your campaign is more national or it's just online and um, then you can direct people to um, just a simple url landing page that you could create specifically for your campaign and what the benefit of that is when they go to your landing page they'll have to enter your email their email address sorry and you can then start marketing to them directly so you're building um, a, a list of good contacts um, it tends to last about seven to ten days before it fades away. So um, it's always worth putting it on towards the side of a busy street rather than down the centre. Um, just as a little tip for you. Um, I'll just give you one final example as well who's done it well. So in 2007, Kia cars, they were a relatively unknown brand in the UK. And they wanted to, to publicise the launch of their new model. And uh, they, were, they were specifically targeting 18 to 25-year-old cool people. Um, and they did this across 10 cities throughout the UK, from Glasgow to Brighton. And um, and they placed these adverts outside, you know, hip venues, bars and restaurants and that type of thing. The end upshot is they sold over 6,000 cars in their first month. So it had a massive impact for them. Now, in terms of costs, just to give you an idea, you're looking at around 60 to 70 quid per ad. So it's relatively cheap. Now, normally, the, the companies who do this type of thing, there is a minimum value of about 25 ads. But if you, you know, let's take Manchester um, or something like that, if you put 25 ads around the city, um, you're going to get your message out there, whatever it is, to a, to a lot of people. And if you think about that in, in terms of um, the cost of a billboard or putting an ad on a, a bus stop or on the side of a bus, a bus it becomes a lot much uh, so, sorry, much more cost-effective way in potentially greater results. So it's uh, quite a quirky one, that, but um, it's it, it's proven to work. And there's lots of other ways that we can talk about advertising. So even a postcard in a shop window can be creative and you can think differently with it. In fact, the Chip Shop Awards, which is a design awards of all things, um, runs its own postcard in a window category. Uh, every year and we're just going to show you some some of the amazing entries uh, that go into this it's just quirky approaches on a traditional media so obviously in this case removing uh, or making it look like they've removed all the other adverts or using the blue tack to signify where you put your fingers on the, the fretboard a really simple gym the window cleaner if you can see this i've done a good job And also just using the format, you remember what we said about the um, frames in the gallery, if one's slightly askew, it's that kind of thing if something doesn't look right in that window, so it gets their attention. Or you could just use that cheeky, saucy, seaside kind of um, innuendo. Again, some blue tap placement for this kind of reiki sort of treatment or hot stones or whatever it is. And then using the, the card itself in a slightly different way. Might be a different way to stand out. And printing it as well. It does look 3D, that, doesn't it? 
So lots of different ways that, you know, just it's, especially if you're doing localized advertising, if you're a small business that wants to try and get your message out there, um, these are really cost effective ways to go about it. If you've got, you know, very little budget um, and it's just thinking differently again, rather than just putting the standard writing down, doing something that's going to stand out a bit differently. And then it comes down to things like press ads as well. If you're doing an advert in the local Cheshire Life or whatever magazine, think about the information that's already in there. This is a really old ad. I think it's from the, the 70s. Um, Volkswagen took out a full-page ad in all the big newspapers. This one was in The Times, I think. Um, and it's full of information, lots of words, lots of pictures. So a full-page that's actually blank is going to stop people in the tracks and then just with a little tiny bit of copy it does the sale for you and what we find is actually over the years speaking to lots of different clients when they've invested in buying a full page ad they want to cram as much information in there as they can they want to try and do everything but it's not necessarily the best way to go about it sometimes an advert is just there to get people's attention and give them a little bit of information and then they can go on to progress to get the other info as well. So don't worry when you're doing low budget advertising that you have to try and get as much value out of it as you possibly can. Sometimes doing too much actually is worse and less productive than just doing a little. So think about getting people's attention. Now, when it comes to online, this is a great area where you can work with very little budget. Um, and Alex, this this next one, I'm sure everyone's going to be familiar with it, but it's a great opportunity um, with technology to be able to do advertising and, and marketing for next to nothing. Nowadays, um, we've got the technologies on our phones. So even on the way to work, you could probably produce some graphics or edit a video or do some photography and post it online just as you're commuting on the train or the bus or whatever. And it used to be in the old days, going back to the you know 80s, even the 90s, where you'd have to go to a professional photographer or a design agency because they were the only ones that had the technology to do design and print and photography and video editing and stuff. Now, everybody's got it in the phones. So in this case, campaigns can just cost you the time it takes you to do it and, and a little bit of creativity. So... I'll pass you on to Andy and he'll talk you through it. Yeah, so you'll remember the Ice Bucket Challenge and uh, you've probably been nominated, you've nominated someone, you, you've had it poured over your head. Well, it actually started as the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge in America. ALS is, is, is commonly known as uh, motor neuron disease in the UK. And in, in 2014, um, a group of ALS officials came up with this idea um, sat around the table and thought, wouldn't it be good if we could get a load of people online dunking um, ice water over your head um, and then nominate someone and then give some money to charity? So the simplest idea. Uh, and it was basically just to make vital funds for, for research purposes. So what they needed to do, and you probably all won't have um, access to the, the big celebrities that they did, as they enlisted um, people like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg initially to, to do this challenge and then nominate someone. So as you all, all know, um, social media soon picked this up and it went viral within, within a matter of days and everybody in the world kind of knew about it. Now, this actually had an unbelievable response in terms of donations. And in, in 2014, they managed to raise over $220 million for the disease, which is unbelievable. They did actually relaunch it again in 2016 to 2019, and although we didn't have the you know the, the same effects that had been done before, they were able to, to to raise even more funds. But just to give you an idea of some of the stats, there was over 2.4 million challenges listed. There was over 28 million uploads of the of people doing this, and in one month they actually raised 98 million compared to a normal month of 2.7, which is not bad. I mean, but again. We're talking about they've got the, the 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 big hitters to get this on board, but just thinking differently and a bit creative, it was people pouring a bucket of water on their head. So anything is possible if they can do that. This company's Outwell Tents, um, and 
The camping and caravanning industry is worth mm. £1.7 billion pounds a year in the UK alone. So it's a very, very competitive marketplace, and there's a lot of very established uh, camping brands out there. And when Outwell came over to the UK, I think they're an American brand, um, they, they weren't getting much take up from a lot of the retailers. Um, so what they started doing was just doing really simple product demos. And this is something you could do with just, you know, a basic iPhone propped up on the table or, you know, if you've got a little tripod um, that you can do yourselves. And they all they did was simply put the tent up and show you how easy it was to do and show you some of the innovations that they thought of. So there was little things like um, a zip-in bathtub ground sheet so that it keeps the creepy crawlies out. But if you get it muddy, um, you can unzip it and wash it down without getting the rest of the tent wet. Really clever little things that they demonstrated why their tents were worth it, uh, worth investing in for families particularly who like to go camping. And the videos themselves are really useful in the field, forgive the pun, you know, if you're struggling to put up the tent, you can watch someone else doing it and see how it's done. But also to demonstrate those um, innovations that they were adding to their to their products. And as a result, these guys absolutely climbed the ladder, stole market share for themselves and became one of their more popular um, tent brands. So a really cost effective way, again, of just getting your message out there. We know that video is probably the most um interactive thing on 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 social media uh youtube is was watched across all generations and it's it's actually the the first or the most used platform even out out competing facebook in that respect and um, it's what people choose to go to for entertainment i suppose um, and it's surprising how many product videos people actually watch uh, when they're on YouTube as well. So a really, really effective way of doing some marketing that costs you very little uh, to produce. Thanks, Ben. Um, now, we, we're giving you loads of um, different ideas here in, in different scenarios. I will assure you we, there's a few more to go and then we're going to get into the process behind it. So we just wanted to give as many different ways that you can, you can think differently as possible. So this is a uh, Beldre. This is actually one of our current clients at the moment, and uh, they basically do home cleaning products, and they do they do loads of different marketing initiatives. But we just wanted to highlight one particular thing uh, that they do very well on social media, particularly Facebook. So you've all seen these memes in um, gift shops, birthday cards, that type of thing. They're very popular at the moment, and um, what they've done is is taken that that meme but uh, put a, a witty remark on there relating to something like cleaning so they started to do this on facebook a couple of times a week and these had a massive effect to their target audience as the sayings tend to be you know everyday things that someone cleaning their house can relate to and get on board with and the engagement that they get from this is is really through the roof some of them get th you know, thousands and thousands um i mean one of them got just over 500,000 in reach, over 9,000 in likes and reactions like comments and stuff, had over 3,500. So it's um, it, it's very powerful for them. Um, the important thing about it is, though, it's it's very shareable. So the audience can share it with their friends and kind of own the humour. And um, it's also important to remember that it does make people smile, but it's not just about that. First of all, they've they've got on board with their target audience, but ultimately they, they want sales from this as well. They, they, they want a purpose. So all of the, the posts that they have on, first of all, they've got the, the customer engaged with something that they can get on board with and relate to. Um, but they do have a link to buy the specific product. So it's making it as really easy for the customer. And because they, this works so well, they tend to do it a couple of times a week. And um, so that's something for you. If if you've got something that works well, carry on doing it. You don't have to just keep coming up with different ideas. And for them, really, it's kind of their golden ticket on, on Facebook because they've, they've tried loads of different things in the past to, to a degree of success. But this is kind of their sweet spot of their audience. So they keep repeating it. And um, they know their audience that well. So they know that 96% of their audience are women. And of those women, um, the biggest age group are 35 to 44. So this content works really well for them. So And social media, so it's kind of free. They're not doing paid ads. This is all organic posting. There's something to consider. 
the, the important thing to remember here as well is that you can get um, these meme builders uh, for very, very cheap or free as an app for your phone. So anyone can make these. It's not just, you don't have to have design skills particularly. A lot of them are, they have preset templates. You just upload an image and, and, the, and you type in your text and off you go. So um, really cost effective way to do some engagement, really engaging posts. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, ones. It's a very recent one as well. It's uh, Brewdog and Aldi trolling each other on social media, which can often be a no-no, but in this case, um, it worked really well. So I'm sure, well, hopefully you, you, you did see, but Aldi started um, selling uh, an IPA and ale that looked very much like Brewdog's punk IPA. And they even went one step further and, and called it the anti-establishment IPA. And quickly things started to circulate on social media. So Brewdog got hold of this and, and I think it was the very next day they hit back and, and they mocked up um, uh, another IPA, but in Aldi's colours and Aldi's brand and called it Yaldi. And then there was some back and forth between social media accounts and um, Brewdog actually suggested that Aldi should stock a new range that they just mocked up. So then Tesco saw this and they got involved, got in on the act to say that actually we're interested in stocking that beer. And uh, Aldi not to be outdone, hit back again. And they said, if you change the name to Ald IPA um, and send us a crate, we can uh, we can talk. And Brewdog did. They, they did it. And um, two months later, the spoof IPA is now on sale exclusively at Aldi. It's only for a limited time. I don't know if anyone's actually tried it yet. Uh, but it's just a great way of something started out as a bit of a joke, as a bit of a trolling exercise turned into something. So it, it's important that you know collaborations do take place all the time. So look look out for things that you can get involved with. You know, if you see your competition doing something, they don't have to be the enemy. You know, get on board with them if it's right for the business. Um, and Brewdog never used to be like that. You see, they used to take a much more serious approach. So they've learned from their mistakes in the past. They used to. They've threatened a number of businesses with legal action if someone had something very similar or had a name very similar. But after they threatened legal action, it often got withdrawn because a lot of their fans and, and followers, you know, we gave them a lot of backlash for it. So now they've taken on much more of a humorous uh, approach. And you can see with things like this, it really worked out well for them because they're making a lot of money from it. So it's just a, an, another little way of, uh, of getting it out there. Now, it's not just consumer stuff uh, that we've looked at here. You know, we've given you a couple of ideas about direct mail, particularly useful for B2B as well. But sometimes it's about the meeting itself. You know, if you're pitching, it might be a case that the, the prospect has got three or four businesses that they're going to speak to. And you can do marketing within your meeting, you know, by making it a bit more memorable. Perhaps they're coming over to you and you want to make it, so that they remember you well. Maybe it's your office that's like Google or something like that, or maybe you just want to do something that, that will make things a bit more fun and make you stand out from the competition. Uh, in our previous agency, we had one of those aroma machines and it pumps out the smell of peppermint, uh, the agency being called Peppermint Soda. And people always commented on that. That was always something that stood out. Just a really simple detail, the smell of peppermint in the air. Um, and another thing we did was um, we changed the whole music. Often you go onto a business's whole music and you get that sort of standard blurb that gets spoken out or you get green sleeves or something. Um, so we put um, cartoon and children's television theme tunes and we just put about 20 of them, just little snippets um, on the whole music. And what we found is that we wanted people to be smiling when they picked up the phone to us, especially if they've been put on hold. And it was great. People would answer, you'd pick up the phone to them after they'd been on hold and they'd be laughing about some Thundercats tune or, you know, um, the Wombles or whatever. And it would be a great icebreaker. Oh, which tune did you hear? And oh, yeah, my favorite's this one. And sometimes we even had clients saying, Can you put me on hold just so I can hear your hold music again? Because it really made me laugh. So little things like that can be a big thing. Um, 
when it actually comes down to standing out from your competition and giving them that experience side of things. And they don't even have to cost a lot of money. Now, Andy got us in with Bear Grylls Survival Academy. When when we first started, oh, sorry, when Andy first started, on his first day, he went round to everybody in the, in the agency and said, can I just have three clients that you would love to work with? And I said, well, anyone in the outdoor world, but if you could get Bear Grylls, thinking there's no chance. And he got us a meeting with them. And for me, this was an absolute dream client. And we got the meeting. They were coming up from down south. The meeting was planned well in advance. And then shock horror, the scaffolding went up the week of the meeting. And the landlord said, there's absolutely no way I'm taking this down for, for you to have a meeting. So we had to try and turn a negative into a positive here because, you know, the client turning up to a load of scaffolding didn't really uh, fill us with confidence. So what we did was we got a climbing rope and we slung it down from the top of the scaffolding, put a silly sign on there, um, just saying Bear Grylls Survival Academy up. All of us, all the visitors used the door and the client loved it. We turned that horrific looking scaffolding into something that actually became quite good fun. It made it more memorable and we did win the client as well, which was fantastic. Um, so sometimes it can be taking that negative situation and trying to flip it and use it to your advantage. And again, this didn't cost anything. I already had the climbing rope. We just had to make a sign and it just made a difference. Another example, um, we a client called Zook, um, they made software similar to CV library, um, so recruitment sort of stuff. And being new to market, they really needed to catch up, um, needed to really make a big splash with their audience. And um, so we we were thinking about their audience recruitment, you know, generally quite young, cash hungry, money motivated, and we thought, well, what's the biggest show in the land where we're going to get them all in one room at once? And it's the REC Recruiter Awards. So this is one of those events. The award is really competitive. Lots of people dressing to impress in sharp suits and expensive dresses. The alcohol's flowing. Um, it's the biggest event of the year and all the big players are there, really. So we thought about this. What do they all love? Well, money. So why don't we hijack the REC Recruitment Awards you know, slightly prearranged. And then if you've heard of a flash mob, well, we decided to do a cash mob. So the idea is just after dinner, before the awards begin and the lights go down, a spotlight comes on, hip hop starts blasting and out, out come all these men in sharp suits and women in fur coats and cocktail dresses and sunglasses looking very glamorous. They've got ghetto blasters on the shoulders and they're palming money out. Uh, five pound notes actually but um t-shirt cannons on the stage firing out five pound notes you know you can imagine the air was full of all these five pound notes over all the people and they're all going wild once they suddenly realize that's money they're all grabbing at it the whole thing is chaos and once everybody starts to settle down the, the cash mob have gone up onto the stage grabbed hold of the mic and said it's all about the money yeah Look out for Zook and watch the cash roll in. And then on the screen, it says, Zook, make it rain. Now, they're all going to remember that. But we had to pitch this idea. And when we had to pitch it, we decided, well, let's reenact it. So this is Andy and I and Lexi and Steph from our team. And we decided to reenact it at this little business park in Nutsford. And the pitch team go in um, and they set up the scene and pitch the idea. And we're listening at the door. And on cue, we burst in with the hip hop blaring, a load of fake fivers. And the clients got this look of horror and then delight because they realize what's going on. Unfortunately, what we didn't realize was um, it was a shared offices. So a lady burst in after us screaming, turn it down. And um, yeah, she wasn't best pleased with us. So it kind of brought it to an abrupt end. But the client loved it. It was memorable. And rather than just pitching an idea in a conventional way, you know, a bit of pitched theatre brought it to life. Uh, we did win it, but unfortunately that actual uh, event didn't take place because they had a management buyout and things changed. So a bit of a wasted opportunity, but certainly different. So I think we've given you plenty of examples and you're probably wondering, right, okay, how how am I supposed to do apply this to my business? You know, maybe I've not got five grand here in five pound notes or whatever. Um, 
that's okay. They were just giving you some ideas about how you can do different types of things in a different way to get more bang for your buck, if you like. So no matter what size your budget is, is and, and even if it's a road that everyone travels that you're going to be advertising in or more importantly in fact if it is um we're going to give you some tips and some tools that you can use over the the next few slides that will help you to think differently about your business your audience and how you're going to get your message out there so if you saw our first webinar you'll have to bear with us on the next couple of slides because you might have seen this before but it really is part of this process so if you have, then maybe use this to think about how you might work on your business or maybe make a brew or something. I'll have a tea, no sugar, please. So before you start thinking about what you to do, you've got your brief, you're narrowing it down to what your objective is. You're thinking about who you're trying to reach. You're thinking about what you want to achieve. And don't try and do everything all at once. You know, do it a stage at a time. Get their attention. Tell them what to do next. Make it simple. And then take your brief and make that simple. Try and describe it in one line. We call it the one line brief. So picture here of the Sistine Chapel. Um, very complicated looking thing. And a lot of businesses say that their business is complicated. It's very difficult to get those things across. So how am I supposed to simplify it to one line? Well, if you take this, it's really complex. You know, there's a lot to take in. There's lots of different phrases across different panels. Lot, depicts lots of different biblical scenes you know it's on the walls the ceiling around the windows there's a lot of stuff going on and if you imagine a one-line brief for this you might think how am i supposed to get all that into one line you know how, what one-line brief could the cardinals have given to michelangelo for example how about bring the glory of god's almighty creation into the chapel really simple way of describing what we see there and a, a good way to describe a one-line brief okay same principle here how did james cameron pitch this to the networks and raise funds you know how do you describe everything that goes on in the film alien in just one line how about jaws in space See, it is possible to take complicated things and boil them down to something simple. And the point of doing this is it gives you focus. It helps you process. But also, if you keep it somewhere very visible, it helps to keep you on track. So as you go off down the creative route, you can keep checking in and making sure that you're staying on track. So we're going to give you a little brief now, um, a little exercise, something you can doodle about while we're we're going through the rest of the presentation um, and we'll do this at the end. So don't feel you've got to start posting things now, but try and get some ideas together. Here's your one line brief. We want you to design a coin worth digging up in a thousand years. You don't have to draw it, but, you know, just describe it in words or whatever. Draw it if you like. Um, so have a think to yourselves. At what am I going to do here to design a coin that's worth digging up in a thousand years time? Okay, if you've all taken note of that, I'll just move on. So when we get onto the methodology for thinking differently, you might think, well, that's I'm overwhelmed. Um, but don't say you can't do it. You absolutely can. Creativ creativity itself, it's not a talent that's gifted to a select few. There is a process that you can use, and we're going to show you how. First of all, gather. Invest the time or you know, it doesn't have to be hours. Just invest some thinking time and some research time to understand the the project and the brief properly. We just said a few minutes ago, think about the audience, the objective, what kind of results. And now take that information and expand it. Gather loads of information. Gather inspiration. Get reference material together and useful things that you can use to help inspire you. Because if you just sit there staring at the wall, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. And other people's ideas can set you off on new ways of thinking. So think, start putting down ideas and make loads of lists. Get all the ob obvious stuff out first. An exercise that we do with, with some clients and marketing teams is active thinking. And what we basically do is we, um, we give a brief. There's a short period to ask questions of the brief. And then there's 15 minutes of time that's that's actually on a timer and during that that period 
but you ask for as many ideas as possible. Now, we're not commenting on the ideas in any way. We encourage bad ideas and we nobody is to talk down anybody else's idea. It's only just about throwing out ideas and they don't even have to make sense. Okay. You, what we tend to find is in the first five minutes, everyone chucks loads of suggestions in. It's hard to keep up writing them all down. And what happens is it's like the first stop on the creative tube line. They get all the obvious stuff out, all the things that everybody would think of when you come to solve a problem. So solutions, that jigsaw puzzle thing always comes out. And these are things that have probably been done, but we don't discard them. Like I said, bad ideas are great because they can spur other people on to come up with good ideas. They might hear it and go, that's that rubbish, it doesn't work. But actually, if you did this, it could work. So then they come up with a really good idea. And then what we find is about five minutes in, everything dries up. You know, everybody goes quiet and they start thinking to themselves. And you have five minutes of really awkward silence. And it's, you know, it can be excruciating, but we keep them going. And for about five minutes, everybody's just sat thinking. And this is when they're starting to process. They're starting to push things further. And in that last five minutes of the 15, that's when you get the real gold starting to come out because all the obvious stuff's gone. And all these new ideas start to formulate. They're not you know, as prolific as the first five minutes, but you get some absolute gems that tend to come out. And again, bad ideas are great in this. You know, like I said, they can later on, they can trigger new ideas and send you off on a different path. So now you've got an absolute mess of ideas. You've got an absolute jumble. And that's great. Because what we want you to do now is just walk away. Go and do something else. Don't think about it. Go for a walk. Take in some nature. Go for a run. Whatever it is that you need to do. Einstein used to do menial tasks to let his subconscious process because your subconscious is like a supercomputer. It's much more powerful than your conscious mind is. And it allows you to filter things, taking all that information that's in there. And by not consciously thinking about it, you're actually filtering it out and processing ideas. And it's really, really powerful. So if you ever see a creative staring out the window or doing something menial and you think, well, they're not being productive, they actually are. They're they're being really productive. At least that's what I tell my wife. So then that's it. The moment the semblance of an idea comes and it'll feel amazing and you'll be enthusiastic about it and you'll know it when you see it. But don't expect it to be fully formed. Again, you've got to make lists. And this is just the start of your exciting journey into being creative and coming up with a great idea. So now what you've got to do is craft it. And don't be upset if the idea doesn't immediately resonate with other people. Work it up. Take criticism. Think, make sure it's intelligent criticism, but take it on board. Give it some tough love. Think about what the obstacles are, how it will get to market, You know what's going to get in your way. Make more lists. And just remember, anyone who ever took a shower has had a great idea. So this is 1% of this is inspiration and then you've got 99 percent of perspiration to follow there's a great agency called bartle bogle hegarty down in london and years ago they created these pencils for the team and what it does is just demonstrate what it takes to craft a good idea into something that can go to market and of course they make sure that their, their clients saw this as well so let's give you some tools to push it further and really think about how you can play with that idea now and try it in different scenarios. So the first one is go big. Make it as big as you possibly can go. You can always pair back, but what it helps you do is explore the idea and make mistakes as well because you learn from them. And this is a time when you can afford to make mistakes. And ultimately, this will help you, hopefully, to find the right solution. You'll certainly learn something from doing this. This example that's on the screen here is Deloitte's and it's um, it's an anamorphic installation at the World Economic Forum. And basically, they were they were really late booking the space. And so the agency were tasked with making a security tunnel look stunning. And it's actually a terrible space to work with. It's just a corridor. But by doing this anamorphic style, they made it into something that's massive. 
And it was really clever the way that they did it because this is a high traffic zone. Everybody had to walk through it to get into the World Economic Forum. And by doing this, it positioned them as a forward thinking company. Um, they became the talk of the forum and they won loads of awards for it as well. But they really positioned themselves really cleverly. If you look in the top right there, that's actually the space that they had to work with. So if they'd have just put a load of images like a gallery sort of style down there, probably wouldn't have done that much for them. But instead, they turned that space into something massive. So magnifying what you're doing can sometimes turn an idea into something great. But also simplifying can make an idea fantastic as well. This is for Bangra's Indian Sausage non-packaging. Um, first of all, what a great name. Indian Sausages, Bangers, Bangras. I love that. And they thought about sausages and the packaging. And, it, you know, if you've got a sausage, you've got a load of sausages on a, um, a supermarket shelf, they probably don't look that much different from each other. So how do you make a sausage look Indian? And they use this idea of henna to tattoo the skin. Um, because sausages have their own packaging in that respect. Um, now, obviously, it didn't say it solved the containment issue, but it did make them look a very different sausage. Um, and it's just a clever way of thinking differently about the product itself. Another thing you can do is to beautify your idea. Now, everybody likes to look at something stunning, and it's a great way of getting attention, isn't it? So this is the Connaught's Hotel, and it's what they put on their walls it's a beautiful building itself and then when they add this to all the walls they got this commissioned um it just made us an already beautiful place absolutely stunning if you've en ever been it's what you'll probably remember most of all it basically wins them business you know people want to stay somewhere beautiful people want to get married somewhere beautiful Brands want to book it for the launches and celebrities want to be seen there. And Instagrammers, obviously, they need it for their feeds. So it doesn't just get attention, this. It actually does the whole sale, which is a phenomenal way to take an idea. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, well, I don't know how to apply any of these and I'm absolutely stuck. And that's OK. That's absolutely fine. You now, for example, with the coin worth digging up in a thousand years, I don't know if anyone's got any ideas yet. Let us know if you have. You don't have to share them yet, though. But um, don't worry if you're stuck. It's part of the process. I'm going to give you some tools to get unstuck. So first of all, go off piste. Challenge that convention. Don't do what everybody else does, because that's possibly why you're stuck. Maybe you're trying to fit it in to what the convention tells you you've got to do. Don't. Just be wild. Be wrong. Relax. Don't try and force it you know just by playing with it can help you to come up with different ways of, of, of working the idea into something that does work another thing you can do is turn that negative into a positive and you heard me mention this earlier when we talked about Deloitte's in the Grand Corridor or the scaffolding for Bear Grylls visit look for that weakness can you flip it what's the most li unlikely source of advantage is that something you can use to solve the problem for yourself? Another thing you can do is borrow. Now, creative is full of this. It's not always about being first to market. It's quite often about being best to market. So don't get stuck in your, old, own, in your own market, in your own field. Look at other areas for inspiration. Is there anything you can learn? Can you steal anything? You know, can you take something from a completely different industry and do it? But for your industry, does that make it different enough? What's transferable in that respect? Another question you can actually ask yourself midway through or whenever you're stuck is, are you trying to solve the wrong problem? What is it that you're missing? Can you take a step back and look at it from a different angle and go, actually, I was trying to solve this problem, but actually now I think about it, it's this problem that I need to solve and that might release it and help you become unstuck. Something that I use all the time is these oblique strategies. Um, it's just a wild card. And basically what it does is it helps you to change your thought process so that you can think about solving that problem differently. It was created by um, Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt uh, to help them with their music and their art, essentially. And loads of musicians have used it, YouTube, Coldplay and stuff, you know, for the difficult third album. And lots of artists like Damien Hurst and Tracy Emin have used them. 
And basically, you choose one card and you've got to apply whatever it says on the card to your problem. It's not necessarily going to solve the problem for you. It's just going to make you think differently. And while you're sort of thinking, how can how can I do this so that the words are changed? It, it might not solve the problem, like I say, but it'll certainly make you think differently about how you go about it. And it can be hard to do, and it's a bit weird, but it's absolutely fascinating. And if you let the process run, it's really surprising how well it works. Right, there's a good stint from Ben there. I'll take over for a couple of minutes. So this is the marketing toolbox. So everything we've been talking about before, once you once you get a piece of content or a piece of creative, you're now going to have to start to think about where this is going to be displayed. Or maybe you just want to start with some context. So where's your audience? You know, where are they getting their information from? And this this is all part of writing a really good brief. So what we're going to show you is, is a list that's expansive, but not exhaustive. So it's a, basically a huge list of marketing activities that you can apply it to. So use it to think about your audience. Here we've got um, owned media, earned media, and paid media. And there's, as I've said, there's loads to go at here. So owned is something like your website, you own that. Earned media, as an example, could be a press release in a certain publication. And paid media is as simple as perhaps doing a, a Facebook advertisement, something like that. Um, but as we said, there's, there's loads here. So you can, you can select some and just use it to expand your ideas and creativity and, and think about different ways that you can use your creative and apply it to, to one of these particular services. Now, as I've said, a lot of these things can be quite scary. There's loads to go at. So we're not saying you know, pick five or ten. Just start with one initially. What's going to be right for your business? And going back to that, you know, writing that brief. If you write a really good brief, then one of these will scream out to you. And, you know, the, the, you can do it from, from a zero budget up to the big budgets, but one of these things will work. Um, if we then look at the creative toolbox as well. So if you're really struggling to think of things to do, you can use this list uh, to set you off with some ideas. So what you can see there, just really some common themes like musical, clever, competitions, emotional, that type of thing. Now, you don't just have to stick to them. You can twist them around. You can make them stupid. You can make them big, uh, beautiful or simple, whatever works for your audience and creative. So just have a, have a really good think into that. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can open this up from a, a presentation to a discussion. So there might be a few of you there that need to turn your mic on. Um, but yeah, essentially, it's just tell them where to do it, Ben. If you just you can see whether your mic is, you can just yeah, you can see if your your mic's got a line through it. It's just above the chat. Um, is anyone brave enough to do it? Has anyone got any ideas? Has anyone thought of anything that they can that is a coin worth digging up in a thousand years? Why would it be worth digging up? Absolute silence out there. Is, is anyone out there? Is it just me and Andy talking to each other? Uh, Voxer is typing. Sounds like uh, it might be a case technically of uh, just turning your own microphone on. Um, Voxer hasn't got one. Carol's there. Jeanette's there. Anyone want to give us a squeak? No, there's lots of people squeaking in their uh, lounges and kitchens and offices now. Okay, well, throw out any ideas if you have. Um, and, you know, have a think. Uh, we're getting a, a voice message from Carol. Let's see what this is. No, nope, just uh, it says my mic is blocked. I'll just, All right, no worries. I'll unmute everyone. Yeah, technical um, difficulties. I don't know if turning, if there's anything we can do here. Um, I think everything's on. Alex? I was thinking of something coronavirus related. So maybe a distinguishable coin with like exercise and a virus symbol or an emblem in the middle, just because we're going through such unprecedented times and it's probably going to appear in the history books going forward. So, yeah. Very interesting. I like that. That's a good idea. Marking a point in history um, that they can relate and date back to a very specific time. That's definitely a coin worth digging up. Um, 
a mask picture with eyes above a mask uh, 202 or is that meant to be 2020 i'm not sure uh on masks yeah another again marking that point in time is definitely uh, an interesting thing you know we dig up roman coins and we're able to date them and it tells us a little bit about their culture um love it really nice way of thinking creatively anyone else well while we're waiting i'll throw in this idea it's a musical coin and basically it has the symbol for music on it now in a thousand years time don't know if that symbol will, will come up but the idea here is just raised dots um and then they've got a pattern to them see if you look at it it's fairly crude but you know one and then there's two dots and then one and then two one two so you get a rhythm that starts to build and perhaps if they were to drag something over that they would get the sound of that rhythm it would be an interesting way of uh of discovering something that actually does something as well so lots of different things there and have a play with it you know just use that as an exercise to get you warmed up and we've got one from sandra uh graphene the new material as in stone age iron age again that's brilliant yeah defining our era the era of graphene that's a fantastic idea love it i wonder if anyone will dig up bitcoin in a thousand years probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but you do mine for it don't you anyway that's uh that's basically the presentation